Bravo. Um, this is this is an unimaginable honour for someone who has tried to tell stories of working class life for many years, but to be here surpasses all that. This is a great, great honour. And thank you, Joe, and thank you, Alan. And if I go on too long, Joe, give us a kick. <laughs> Look, this, this meeting is not only a demonstration of your strength and your, uh, and your confidence, it's also a meeting that shows what we are capable of. It shows that we are standing at a moment of great hope. Why is it a moment of hope? Because we have a Labour leadership that for the first time in my memory stands with the people. And the second issue of hope is that the, the wind is in our sails, they won a, nearly won a great victory and they will do next time. This wind is with us. But there's, we have to ask why has Jeremy made the connection to people he has? And I think it's because he and the others with him say simple truths that people recognize. They say we don't have to live with inequality. We don't have to live with grotesque wealth that doesn't pay taxes and desperate poverty, on the other hand. We don't have to treat our vulnerable people, sick and disabled, to humiliate them, to starve them, to give them a choice of staying warm or going hungry. We don't force them into food banks. This government has used hunger as a weapon. And if you are poor, they say your poverty is your own fault. Another simple truth that Jeremy and John and the others say is that we can build houses for everyone. We don't have to build penthouses that stay empty as investments while others are forced into unsafe towers. And listening to Matt, who spoke with such eloquence and power, I had to think there are two moralities here. There's a morality in this field, there's a morality of people here, of solidarity and mutual support and care for each other, and there's a morality of the other side, which is greed, which is selfishness, which is gated communities, and they're quite different. Our morality will triumph in the end. Another simple truth, a simple truth. We can take care of each other's health without people making a profit from it. We don't need Richard Branson to get another private island in the Caribbean for us to cure our sick. And we can invest in real jobs, real jobs that are secure, that are not bogus self-employed, where people don't wait for a phone call last minute of the night to see if they've got a shift next day. We can invest in real jobs, making things people really need, and give, give workers the security of a wage that will sustain a family, where they can have a house. That's security with jobs. That's fundamental to Labour's programme. And another simple truth, a simple, simple truth. We can educate our children without giving them a lifetime's burden of debt. Well, all this is possible, is possible, but we're not there yet, not by a long chalk. We're going to need the fighting spirit of people here and fighting spirit shown by the, the brave people of have kept, as it's been mentioned already, the, the Orgreave campaign for truth and justice. That must carry on and succeed. And I'd like to link that with the Ricky Tomlinson's campaign to clear his name and the Shrewsbury pickets.
Rick is, Rick is a good longtime friend and comrade. And I know he needs our strength to get that wrong righted. So for the show be pickets. And also we need the fighting spirits of people here, the teaching assistants of Durham, who waged a wonderful campaign. And they need a settlement where no one loses wages or conditions or jobs. And I'd like to tell you about the fighting spirit of some people from my union, Beck to the Film Workers Union, the Picture House Workers in London and elsewhere, who are fighting for a living wage and trade union rights. And they've had three of their union reps sacked. So they need your strength and your solidarity too, the Picture House Workers of London. And one struggle, one struggle that is, that really brings cheer to us all. And that's a story I heard only yesterday, and that's in Sheffield, where a job centre is being closed, or should be closed, intended to be closed by the Department of Work and Pensions. The job centre staff are going on strike, not for their own jobs, but for, in solidarity with the people who need that service. Now that's, that's our morality. And I'm only sorry that Ian Duncan Smith is not there when they win, because win they will. Well, the long dark night that began with Thatcher in 79 may be coming to an end. Let's hope. Her attacks on the working class, her laws against trade unions, and everything that followed, the viciousness of the miners' strike, that memory may be come to an end, and with it, and with it, the memory that followed of Blair and his privatisation and his illegal war. That is coming to an end. But the closer we get to power, make no mistake, the more vicious the attacks will get, and the stronger we will need to be. If we think we've been under attack, we ain't seen nothing yet. And let's remember, let's remember the dirty tricks that they played in the past, things that were said about the people of, great people that have led our movement, like Tony Benn and Arthur Scargill and others, the lies that were told about them. There will be lies, there will be dirty tricks, and we've got to stay strong. And for that, for that we need a united movement. And now I want to be contentious on this day of unity. We need representatives in Parliament who are committed to this programme and will not work against it. And we need, we need an injection of democracy because most people in trade unions have to be elected. And I think it's perfectly democratic that when members have served a particular time in Parliament, then they have to be reaffirmed or reconfirmed by their members. Because we can't have, we cannot have the disgusting attacks that went on against Jeremy that went on against Jeremy in the last Parliament. And let's have a di an extension of democracy throughout the whole party. The organisation, the governing body, that should all be elected by the members overwhelmingly. Yes. And further, we need union leaders, and I'm not speaking about anyone here, we need union leaders who will not only talk left, but act left. Yeah. With all that, with all that, with your great strength, with your determination, with your discipline, then yes, we can win. And Labour can be the party that the Labour movement has always needed.
and not in my lifetime had. And public good, the public good can finally triumph over private greed. If we remember the strength of our determination here, yes, we can, we can overcome, we can get there. Yes, we can. And I'll finish with one sentence from hundreds of years ago from a man called John Ball, who led the Peasants' Revolt, and he described socialism. He talks about socialism today, but he described it. And it was about public ownership and popular control. And he said, nothing shall go well until all things be held in common. That's socialism. Solidarity.